All right. How are you feeling today? Hello, my name is Armando Fagel, and I'm a resident here in Sydney, Australia. I'm also part time a science communicator and illustrator. Uh, I run a YouTube channel by the name of Armando Hasudin. Today, I'm here to share with you three tips on how to be a learner and an educator. And I know everyone has their own learning style. Some people like to write, some people like to read, some people like to create their own mind maps, drawing it out. Uh, other people are able to sit for hours in a lecture room listening, and others like to use online resources, even videos from YouTube. But what I want to do today is to actually share with you three ways, three tips on how to be both a learner and an educator. My tip number one is talking out loud. So every day we're exposed to a lot of things, a lot of information. As a medical student, you have to cover a lot of content. You know, uh, during morning ward rounds, when the specialist asks you a question and you don't know the answer to it, uh, that's information that you need to learn. Um, as a junior doctor, you know, you're on the wards, you come across a clinical scenario and you don't know what to do. That is something that you want to learn. Uh, that is something that you uh, don't know. And so normally we would read up on, on these things that we don't know, either during the day or when we go home uh, at night. Um, but what we don't tend to do is actually talk out loud about it, talking about it. So uh, what talking out loud allows us to do is actually allows us to reinforce the things we have learned, but also it allows us uh, to be able to uh, practice explaining what we have learned, explaining a topic, explaining a concept. So there are many ways to talk out loud. So one way is obviously just talking to your friends or even writing something down and then reading out loud. What I like to do is that I like to draw things out and I like to narrate uh, this, the topic in my head. So talking to myself in my head, basically. Uh, but I know other people that, you know, when they study, when they're learning, uh, you know, to reinforce what they've learned is that they actually talk to their pet animal, such as their dog. They have a discussion with their dog. Uh, and I know other people that actually talk to inanimate objects, such as their childhood toy. And again, this is really, really good because, you know, what talking out loud allows you to do is it allows you to reinforce uh, something that you have learned, but also it allows you to practice explaining a concept, explaining a topic. Um, another way to talk out loud is through a group study session. Because in a group learning environment, you're both a learner and you are an educator. During medical school, I would always study in a small group of three and we would take turns uh, teaching each other and we would take turns learning. And why is group learning so useful? Well, group learning allows you to work in a team. So you're team building. Uh, it allows you to stay motivated. You're motivating each other. It allows you to clarify things you don't otherwise quite understand. Um, I mean, it also allows you to reinforce uh, something which you have learned. And also it allows you uh, to learn from other people, learn how other people uh, talk, learn how other people uh, present their information. Um, and there are many ways to, to, you know, to study in a group, but one way which I find effective is to create a schedule of the topics that you want to cover. And, uh, you know, before a particular day, um, when you, where you have the group session, you will prepare for those topics. You will do your own study before the group study day. Uh, and you can, you know, you could read, you could write, you could do whatever you want. So when it comes to the day, you will actually take turns teaching each other, explaining the topics to each other, and then also take turns listening. And it's very important to know that when you're uh, teaching, that when you're presenting, you're not trying to show the other people how much you know, but you're actually trying to make them understand the topic better. And as a listener, you have to listen carefully and you have to listen and take mental note of any questions that you might have, but also uh, any corrections that you want to make at the end. And, you know, after each uh, presentation, after each person presents, then you have to allocate time for feedback, for any corrections or anything uh, that you want to add 
uh, to, to what the person has presented. And this is extremely important. The feedback session is extremely important because um, I, because many people, uh, most people learn through mistakes, but also a lot of people can learn quite effectively through uh, proper feedback. And this is where we go to my tip number uh, three on how to be a learner and educator, which is feedback. Learning through um, constructive feedback and also through being corrected. So, you know, many people learn uh, through reading, through writing, through doing, uh, through watching, um, but also a lot of people learn from making mistakes and also from receiving feedback. Just as, you know, when we were a kid growing up, our, our parents would always tell us what to do and what not to do. They would correct us. Uh, same applies now during our university training, during our medical training. You know, people telling us, you know, that that is wrong, that this is what you should do, giving us feedback. This is very fundamental uh, for learning and for education. Um, but also, you know, part of it is, you know, we have to, we have to be able to be open-minded. We have to be able to be open to receive criticism, to receive uh, feedback. Uh, and to receive, you know, being corrected. Uh, but also it's very important to not just receive a feedback uh, as in just, you know, negative feedback, just, you know, you did this wrong, but it's very important to receive constructive feedback, advice on how to improve or what to do next time, for example. Uh, similarly, you know, uh, and that's only for a receiver, but similarly, uh, as an educator, it's very important to be able to give constructive feedback because that is how someone will learn. Um, and, you know, it's quite difficult sometimes to, to give feedback to an individual. But one way, one method I like to use is what I like to call the sandwich method. So you can imagine a sandwich with the bread on top, the content in the middle, and then the other bread down the bottom. The bread represents, you know, some positive things about what they've said. And then the middle part, the content, is basically the correction that you want to make. So as an example, let's just say someone's presented on asthma. You know, you start off with the top layer, the bread. You would say, oh, you know, I, I agree. That's, that's very good. In acute asthma, you know, I would use salbutamol and ipotropium bromide. And then, in the middle part is when you would give the constructive feedback, uh, the feedback, which is the correction, which is, oh, but I think you forgot to mention that, you know, steroids are actually very important in acute asthma. And then you would end with the final bread layer down the bottom. But that was a great presentation overall. Thank you for sharing. Um, so this way, you know, it allows, uh, it, it doesn't just give all the negative to someone, but also gives some positive things about what they have done. And that concludes really uh, my three tips on how to be a learner and educator. So the first one was speaking out loud, the importance of talking out loud about what you have learned, either to a friend uh, or either to yourself or even to your uh, pet animal, your dog. Number two um, is group learning. And I can't stress this enough how important group learning is. Even now, I'm still learning in small groups of three um, with some uh, close friends from the hospital. We would take turns preparing cases, uh, prepare it on a PowerPoint, and then take turns presenting, teaching each other, and also listening, you know, uh, and then allow the person to ask questions and also give, uh, you know, proper constructive feedback, which is my tip uh, number three, uh, which is feedback. You know, the importance of uh, being able to receive constructive feedback, but also give constructive feedback. And one model I've shared with you is a sandwich model, which is, you know, talk about a positive of what, what they've said or done, and then give, give them the correction or the, the feedback, the criticism, and then end with a positive uh, at the end again. Thank you.